What's up everybody, my name is Drew Polk. Many of you may know that I use ProStart products all the time in my training, and to me, ProStart is on a whole nother level, and they have helped me in my training a ton. Up until this year, the main product I used was the ProStart Portable Gate, and it is absolutely awesome. But if you saw my video from last month, ProStart sent me the new ProStart Portable Gate Max, which is even better, and it is awesome. And along with that gate, they also sent me the brand new Knickknack Pro Stand. This may look very familiar to you because there are several different designs of this tool. This allows you to do sprints where you place your back pedal on it and you can balance at a dead stop and then you can do your sprints. This particular tool has a moving platform so when you go to sprint, when your pedal comes up slightly, the platform moves with you. And this allows you to have nearly identical form to your gait. So if you don't have a gait, this is a very compact and easy way to get quality training. However, ProStart took this concept and brought it to a whole new level. So this stand is compatible with the ProStart timers and they plug directly into the stand. Now that may not seem like a big deal, but this gives you a very precise and accurate time compared to just beam timers that you put in front of it. And this brings me to another huge feature. So this stand can be used in two different ways. The first is the timer can start when it senses backwards movement, so you can go whenever you want, or the app has a built-in random start with lights, and once the red light or first beep goes, the timer starts, and then it can calculate your reaction time. And this is a function that no other tools have to offer, so this is one of a kind, and it is super awesome. So I really wanna work on acceleration and top speed, so today we're gonna to be doing some 150 foot sprints to incorporate both, and we're gonna be using the stand and the timers, and with the reaction time being measured, we're gonna take a closer look at it because I've never seen any BMX racing testing on reaction time, and I think that is super unique, super cool, so I'm gonna do some sprints and then we'll take a look at the numbers after. So I put all the data together and here it is. So as you can see, there's not really a trend in the reaction time. It was pretty random over the entire session compared to the sprint times that had a decrease in times. So over the whole session, my average reaction time was 0.2459. My fastest reaction time was 0.195. The range of data from the fastest reaction time to the slowest reaction time was 0.092 and the standard deviation was 2.4%. The reaction time isn't a huge component as in track and field sprinting because we have a gate that falls so we can't go faster than that. But when you compare my fastest and slowest reaction times, those could be the difference between being late or hitting the gate. So this is definitely a component to keep in mind and something that's super cool to track. I'm a huge number guy and this was super interesting to me and I thought it was super cool. So that's it for this video. Huge thank you to ProStart for making this happen and creating such a cool tool. If you want one for yourself or any of the other ProStart products, make sure you use my code DrewPolk5 for 5% off. But that's it for this video. I hope you all enjoyed. If you did, make sure to leave a like, hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you all in the next video.